What's up, chat? What's up, YouTube viewership? What's up to the anybody? If you listen to this on SoundCloud, what's up? How y'all feeling? How y'all making out, man? This is the Needed Podcast, episode thirty-four, and and I I thought. I thought the summer would be slow. I thought it'd be slow. I thought I would need some things to talk about. But man, I, with man coming out at the end of July, everything is actually popping. Everything is actually moving right now. Man has more buzz now than it probably did in the last three months, honestly, man. Shout out to my man, Tigre. El Tigre with the sub, man. Two months, that's what I appreciate it, man. My man Kevin Hester in here as well, man. We are live on Twitch right now. If you're watching this on YouTube, listening to it on SoundCloud, know that this show is on every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. I want to make it interactive. I want you on the chat. I want you guys really talking along with me because I got a lot of things to talk about. Uh, mostly uh, the gameplay from this weekend, EA Play. Hopefully some of you guys were out there. Also... This episode, I want to talk about um, injuries. As we saw, we saw Kevin Durant get hurt. I don't want to talk about cheering injuries in sports. If football is different than basketball, uh, because I I think we're pussy. Honestly, I really do. Like I, I, I and it is kind of insensitive, but I think everybody's just a little bit pussy when it comes to the injuries. And I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's the Philadelphia in me. But we'll talk about that later. Also, I want to break down one of the biggest games you guys has asked about on the YouTube, on the comment section. The, one of the best games ever. I'm going to break down Skimbo vs. Problem Man 17 Championship. We'll go over that when I'm done this podcast. By the time the podcast is done, we will give we will give away at least two codes, man. Sp- specifically Xbox. I have some Xbox codes, some PlayStation codes by the end of this. I'm definitely going to talk about the injury thing and how I feel about it. Uh... But we'll get to that. First, I want to talk about gameplay. I have a couple announcements, though. If you guys follow me on Twitter, you know, and I talked about this late, uh, probably two episodes ago, and that's the Fracture Me giveaway that I'm doing by next week, man. I got these in the chat for you guys. You know what I'm saying? You guys can check out this post on Twitter. I believe that's the one. Boom. That I'm giving away a $135 gift card, a $100 gift card, and a $50 gift card. Also, a couple codes for the beta. Again, Next week, if you guys want to check it out. But this is a great way to get your pictures on glass. You know, pictures that we have on Instagram and Facebook or whatever in actual physical form. So we'll have them forever. This is me at the tailgate of the Eagles NFC Championship game last year. So um, that's pretty much what I did with that right there. Mixed it in with a little giveaway with the pictures. You know what I'm saying? So you can get that. So I'm definitely hyped about that giveaway and working with the Fracture Me people in the future. Definitely think that's going to be a good partnership for myself, the podcast, Needed Gaming, everything. Because, like I said, I ordered one of those pictures. I saw one of the ads on Instagram, ordered it up. Bang, it came in probably a week, and I loved it. I loved the results, really. But um, also, this weekend, I want to bring this up. I want to actually bring this up because I think this is going to be a big deal, especially for you, you nerds that are still locked in on mad. And like my man, I see my man Squid in the chat. Uh, we will be bring, talking about this because this is big news, you know, and, and I don't know how involved I'm going to be in with this, but this is actually news that Zan posted, you know, Zan, the, the mudhead playbook, you know, Zan, who does all that, you guys know Zan, posted this um, update on what they're doing with Friday Night Football, which is actually going to become kind of like a point system situation between four uh, next week, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So five different Friday Night Footballs. The top six will get to go to the uh, exclusive one for 10K. Though. So that's pretty awesome. And the reason I'm bringing this up, that Friday Night number 19 will be the first one to go in this five times. The reason... And congratulations to the squid from winning last week. But the reason I bring this up is because... It's going to be special this week. You know why it's going to be special this week? Because your boy will be there commentating. And not only will I be there commentating, I will be there commentating with Bugs. You know what I'm saying? So me and Bugs will be commentating. And it's going to be entertaining because I'll tell you guys, I'm really contemplating... Do I just kill Bugs the entire broadcast? Is that Am I just going to just kill him the whole time? 
Am I just going to drag him under the, brush, under the bus the entire time? Or am I going to take it easy and be professional? That's pretty much what I'm going through. Uh, and pretty much what I've been thinking about since I've realized this. Like, what, like how am I going to go about that, really? You know, because I, because you guys know, I pretty much kill bugs nonstop. But a Friday, Zan, and Zan's in the chat. Now, Zan, tell me, how a Friday night football stream, that, that Zan, that's probably longer than, than the weekend playoffs, right? It's probably a good four or five hours. You know, it's definitely tough. And I start, and I, honestly, I really start thinking, that I'd be killing bugs too much. I'd be feeling bad a little bit, you know? Yeah, about four hours. That's a lot of killing them, you know what I'm saying? So that's definitely going to be... It's going to get bad if I kill bugs the entire time. You know, a healthy balance. Kevin, I might try to balance it. Oh, it's going to be jokes flying. It's definitely going to be jokes flying. You guys know that, you know? Uh, and yeah, hopefully, hopefully when I come back... You know, I'm obviously going to miss this. I'll be broadcasting. I will definitely try. If they're going to give away 10000 I mean, I might as well try, you know, because I, I honestly think, I, I don't think too many of these kids are good. It's pretty much Clef and then everybody else, really. I will eat a salad all week as long as I kill bugs. You know what I'm saying? That, that's what it's about. But anyway, so that's Friday. I'm really excited about that. I didn't know I was working with bugs. You know, I didn't know who it would be, whether it was Zan. I seen Zan there, Guru. Uh, I really didn't care because I just figured whoever was there, I'd, I'd be fine with. I didn't know who, but then they said it was bugs. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is going to be bad, you know, so we'll see. So I'm excited about that. So Friday, you guys already know where to tune in. It's, like This is 19, so it's been going on for a while. Wesley finally won one. I feel like he's kind of been, ever since Clep, see, see, Wesley don't understand about, you know, needed gaming. Like, when, in the summertime... Clef won his bag. You know, we're chilling now. It's all about catching a vibe in the summer. And then Wesley want to come home and he want to start bullying. But he actually want to start beating people now. It's pretty crazy, you know. But honestly, like I said, Friday night, tune in. It's going to be great. I'm assuming, obviously, uh, Joe Rice going to be in it. It looked like K-Max, Jacoby, uh, D-Croft, uh, J-Wall, Clef, people like that are definitely going to be competing. It's going to be a great time. Hopefully, he can call some good games. Uh, and I'm excited about that. Let, another announcement I want to make, uh, Sunday, same, to go along with Mudhead, uh, Friday Night Football, what they want to do is make squads a bigger deal. Now, I don't know if you guys play squads. I'm not the biggest squad person. It is fun, but uh, haven't really got into it, honestly, because there haven't been that many tournaments for it. There's really no reason to play it, and uh, Mudhead wants to make it a bigger deal. Now, because the squads tournaments are only like every fourth or every fifth Friday night, it's hard to find out the 32 people to invite, the 32 teams to invite. So what they want to do is throw little smaller tournaments, kind of like an MCS system. So where if you do well in these smaller tournaments on the weekend or, or whenever they may be, now, okay, now here comes your strength. Here comes your reason to get into the big $1,000 tournament. So Sunday I will be doing a, a squads tournament. Let me find that tweet to put that in the chat uh, because I, I think that's going to be good and – like I said, Country Girl reached out to me and said, you know, we want to make sure the squads community gets heard. We want to, you know, get them a little spotlight. And that's fine. I like calling Madden. Now, I can call some squads, you know. But this being said, I think we only have, you know, um, like I said, I said, we probably only have, as I look at this tweet, I think we only have about five teams signed up. You know, this is your chance to guarantee your spot into the Mudhead tournament. If you win, if you win, you're probably gonna get something around 200 points. So that's definitely awesome. Uh, yeah, see, so so Zang got right there. It's definitely awesome to be able to compete in squads. You guys play. It. Apparently, there's a huge squads, you know, community, and we kind of want to like, you know, brace those two things. You know, that's pretty much what we want to do. You know, regs would be cool. I think regs would be really cool. I think, um, yeah, you can't say, pick the same thing. Wesley says a regs Friday night football would be good. You can't pick the same team twice. Honestly, I think that would be cool. Like if you you if you use the Chiefs in the first round, you can't pick them again. So if you're gonna win, you're gonna have to win. If it's a thirty-two, I think you have to win five games: Chiefs, Falcons, Patriots, and then run out of teams. But definitely, uh, Salary cap, mudhead, they kind of go together. You know, that's pretty much what it is. Um, but also, as far as regs, and this is, it, 
the people if you if you guys are co- still complaining about mirror match you can't it's time to it's time to build that bridge and get over that you know but i don't know but anyway that is the squires tournament sunday friday night friday night football jokes about books all night so if you want to watch the best man players in the world and you want to watch me kill books the entire night about being healthy and sucking at madden tune in also that Sunday, two days later, Squads Tournament will be hosted on this channel. I'll be chilling here watching some Squads Professionals. Last announcement, man. I, I, it's not really an announcement. We got the new physical shirts. We got some new shirts loaded. I put all the We Are Man shirts. Let me show you guys this as well. We, I put all the We Are Man shirts down to the at least amount of money I can charge possible without me losing money. Since there is no more GoFundMe now, there's nothing anything going on like that. Um... There, I did put these down to as cheap as possible. What you need to do is go to the website. Here it is, right here. Go to catalog. Go down here. It's easy. We are Madden. See it right there. Boom. This is all the We Are Madden shirts. Thirteen dollars. Thirteen dollars. A hoodie is twenty dollars. Thirteen dollars. So on and so forth. That you know, these are super cheap right now. So get yourself a T-shirt for the summer. Uh, they're not all black. You can change the colors. You can go here and say, you know, I can get the the gray for the summer because I know this hot. This shit gets hot in the summer. So I like the gray in the summer. Um, but they are as cheap as possible. You know, I, I'm not making any money off these. Uh, so $13 is as cheap as possible. I can put it so I don't make any money for it. So those are definitely, um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, honestly. So check that out, really. Uh, let's see. Okay. So those are all my announcements. Let's get into this gameplay. Did you guys watch the gameplay? Did you guys watch... Um, the stream from Saturday. Oh, we're already messed up a little bit. All right, let me put it here. Did anybody in the chat actually watch this? Because I'm going to be real. I watched this twice, okay? And um, wasn't much gameplay. I don't know if there's something else you guys watched as far as the stream is concerned. You know, I, I saw Juju. I saw Alvin Kamara go crazy. Pretty much about these X factors, like I said, and they said it in the chat. It's pretty much like 2K. That's what it feels like. Um. So let's see. This is really wasn't a big. The, the main thing I guess I saw was when we went with a little bit of Patrick Mahomes. Oh, what also looks super cool. Let me go back to what. What is this here? Oh, the read options and stuff. Oh, but bazooka. Our right, four passes of 30 yards or more. Let, let's be real with the first thing I got to say about that. That's 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 a lot. You know, four plat, four passes of, of 30 yards is not the easiest thing in the world. You know, if you're giving up four passes of 30 yards, and I don't know if this is, like, consistent, like, what you have to do to stop that streak. Would it, like, is it one pass of 30 yards, and if you get sacked, it's over? You know what I mean? I think, to me, that, that's pretty ridiculous. I mean, yeah, he got that ball out of there. Well, in, in all honesty, we know Casey Hayward is not the fastest. You know, I don't. I know Casey Hayward is not the fastest wide receiver. But, and also, you guys have to realize, they do this for effects. Look, there's a spy here they could have sent. I believe these are contains. I don't know what they got going on here. And I will tell you, if these are contains, they look pretty beastly. Now, these are the things I look at on the play, you know. They definitely look... So there's no pass rush. They definitely look pretty good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It looks like it's a lot. And honestly... Honestly, Chet, I don't think that's going to be the best... You know what I mean? The best takeover ability. You know what I mean? Like, you can throw the ball 80 yards, okay. But how... I mean, it might come into factor... Yeah, I feel like that one's definitely going to be a tough one to get. Cleft the guy in the chat. Yeah, that's a hell of a throw, really.
Oh, you guys can't even hear this, my bad. Uh, we got Escape Artist first. And as everyone knows, he's a dual threat quarterback. Escape Artist gives him elite agility and... Holy speed. hell. Like, Hold on. Speed. What? <laughs> Hold up. Like what move was that? Quarterback. Escape Artist gives him elite agility and speed. Oh, and Lord. Like Hold up. Now this is like now this is the ability that they always have. This is not activated. This is just every time they drop back, they have this ability. This was pretty wild. It's him elite agility and speed when scrambling on passing <laughs> plays. Looks like nah, ain't nobody yeah, doing that one. That one was stupid. I'll be real. That was pretty crazy, really. But at the same time, if we had those contains that we had on the first play, the drop back play where they wanted to give him time in the pocket. This guy would be contained over here, so that wouldn't happen. We see Bosa get the sheds. If he actually had a contain over here instead of these dudes getting their ass kicked. <laughs> Looks like Mahomes, right? It's yeah, it does. Sense. Unfortunately. I mean, that's what he does. And then dashing Deadeye gives him perfect passing accuracy when throwing on the run. So it's a nice little combo there. Perfect passing accuracy is the best accuracy you can have in our game. And then here's a red zone. I mean, the yep. that the run, the throws on the run are pretty outrageous, zone, honestly. If you him last year, you know he was deadly in the Look red at zone. that. When he's inside the 20 Dude, what is that? Derwin James? What? What is this? My guy? No look that I, Who's really 32? No, it's not Derwin. But that was terrible. Now is this the game, or is this with? You know what I mean? Honestly, you got to take all these highlights for a grain of salt. One, somebody's not playing. Two, they're probably tuned. So it. it Two is probably super tuned, tuned, so it's on rookie, it's on arc, whatever it may be. But I swear to God, if if someone attempts to throw this pass, I don't care if he has dashing dead eye, deep range, deep dead dead eye, red red bazooka, red zone efficiency. This needs to be broken up. There's no way that this read can be made. I mean, my man just stood there and let it happen. I mean, I don't know. Last yeah, game. so that's why I would take it a green of salt just to show how it He's looks and everything. Accuracy. The only quarterback in the game at launch have perfect accuracy on crossbody throws. Exclusive oh. to him is the no look signature Mahomes that's, animation. That's pretty cool. That's his signature look. That's exactly. As long as that's just an animation, that's pretty cool, really, to me. But come on, this is kind of a lot. Is he unbeatable? Is All right, he talked about. The side of the ball, like what can I do to stop him? Man, you must play Madden, because that's yeah, a question our players are, yeah, are going to want to know. It's frustrating. Yeah, it's a chess match. So just like in the NFL, the way to shut down a high-power passing game is pass rush. The defense is going to have knockout conditions when these guys are in the zone. You're going to see here Mahomes with his X-Factor icon lit up. He's in the zone. Von Miller's going to sack him. The objective right. of the Broncos in this game what is What I noticed, him. and <laughs> yo, Von Miller just dominated somebody's life. I hope that was a tight end. I really, I really want to look back and hope that was a tight end. I don't think it was. Holy hell. These guys are in the zone. You're going to see here Mahomes with his X-Factor icon lit up. He's in the zone. Von Miller's going to sack him. The objective for the Broncos in this game, sack Mahomes, knock him out of the zone. So each team's going to have ways to counter each other. So again, it's, it's, it's authentic football conditions. It's a chess match. It's yeah, I, and as far as the zone is just throwing 80 yards, I mean. That's the least of my problems. His objectives again to get back into the zone. All right, well that's a little bit reassuring. Uh, I'm glad that uh, then I talked about the fear monger one. We all know. As superstar this abilities. is wild to me a little bit. Blocked. We're going to take a look at some of these. He also has superstar abilities. Oh, he does. He's in the video. There, there was the like. There's penalty. no way. Some of these. He that this D tackle is going to cause me to. I, I swear to God, they just threw the ball out of bounds. I swear to God, this was a throwaway by Madden players to make it look better. Cause there's no way in hell that if this D tackle is making my quarterback throw a flat pass out of bounds, now I don't. It's not even open. Also I don't think. But to, if this D tackle is making, that's pretty wild. Superstar abilities. You're oh, he does. He's in the video. There, there was the pressure penalty applied to the quarterback. Right. In addition to that, he has pass rush elite. That's a superstar ability that gives him quicker, faster pass rush shed moves as a pass rusher. And then under pressure makes those penalties he's applying to the throw power and throw accuracy of the quarterback more punitive. So he's a quite a disruptive pass rusher. Because that's one of the things, too. It's not necessarily, Damn. especially with somebody who's playing defensive tackle, it's not somebody who's always going out there and getting sacks. It's guys who are going out there and also getting pressure up the middle, that's pushing offensive linemen into the face of the quarterback. Yeah, it lends itself to more strategy in the game. you got to know who you're playing against. you got to know who you're playing with. Like I said, it's a chess match out there. And then oh, one, one important thing note here with about. all the passing abilities, you said Mahomes seemed really powerful, putting pressure on the quarterback.
new scramble mechanic. All right, pull down I, mechanic. What this, this is. looks tough. I'm gonna be honest. This looks really awesome. I'm excited about this. You guys know I'm a, I'm a hike and haul, hike and run around my quarterback. Pocket presence, God. I think this is dope. To pull down the passing icons with a button press, become a ball carrier, full access to all the spin moves, jukes, ball carrier moves, and then you can bring Definitely back super excited about this. Definitely uh, ready to play. Def kind of, I don't want to say it looks cheesy, but it's, it's something that should be in the game. Like, there's no way I shouldn't be able to, uh, and that's the, actually the, the, Receiver on the, field, but play, the playmaker the is pretty tough. You're going to see the reticle come up to get guys to bite on it. It could, a uh, dual purpose mechanic, you can also use it to pull down if you feel like you've made a poor decision and you want to cancel the throw, just quickly double tap it, you'll pull it back down. So you can, uh, you know, kind of pump fake it to an outside guy and then check it down to a tight end or something like that? Absolutely. You can even use it on double moves. If you want Juju to run a slant and go, Okay. pump fake it on the slant, take him deep. Oh, that's amazing. And there's, uh, it, 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 this keeps getting better. And, it, 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 and you know, this the one thing that's it. crazy, like the pump fake. Okay, you got to tap the button twice. Okay, so how do you lob? So the lob, I really. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it works out. But I will tell you, man, the pump fake should be a man. I, I, I said it probably much last week or when I did the X Factor, was pretty much um, pump fake is pretty like, dude. Even when you play pickup with like your family on Thanksgiving, the pump fake is dominant in life. Like it, yo, it's super dominant, you know. And, and I feel like it's not in man at all, and so that's cool. That's in man. We'll see how it works. Like I said I really don't know. Uh... Goes down really quick for our players. The first is an alert. That's a very basic. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not You're like okay. This is. I'll tell you, you this right now. This formation sucks. Therefore, this play sucks. That's pretty much, I mean, I, like, and I said this, I, I don't know if it was last week or it was the week before, you know, this, this, like, what can I, okay, I can run read option and a slant to figure out, what else can I do out of this, what else can I do out of this, not in this formation, not in this one, read option is not going to be good in this formation, not at all, maybe if, like I said, in this, in the other one I said, call the play, listen, nothing, you'll hand it off and away you go. However, what's cool about if it's in something okay now this could this could have right. possibility and then I said this man the run pass option is only going to be as good as the pass plays they put around it if they have shitty if they just have this pass play and four verticals and inside zone it's not going to be that good that's pretty much how, how I feel I feel how the run pass stuff is always going to be good all in the past the man all the makeshift screens uh, uh, all the running plays, pretty much every running play at least has somewhat of a decent pass play to it. Even Wham, like, yeah, Wham is, is a bummy play, but with good players, man, it actually does have some decent pass plays in Deuce Close, man. Yeah, but Mo, Mo you're right. Yeah, maybe you could change. Who knows? Who knows if we're going to be able to hot route? What if we could, you're right. What if we could hot route Watkins right here? We could put him on a corner route or him on a better post or, you know what I mean? Maybe. But then you might not be able to have Mahomes. I just think they need to. I just think they need to. It needs to have good pass plays with it. That, that's just how I've always felt, and I just hope they put good pass plays. You know. Time just by hitting the receiver icon and throw it if he's open. So that's a really. Oh, he just cool killed man to... covers like that. Whoa, hold up. I felt like he was boxed, and this got open by hitting the receiver icon and throw it if he's open. So that's a really oh, that, that cool animation way brutal. to be creative on offense. And then there's two other types. The peak, more similar to a read option. You're reading a single defender on defense looking at All right, I'd be pissed at my defense on this one. Because this is exactly it. It's a triple option. That's all this is. He took the running back, and then he took the quarterback. More similar to a read option. You're reading a single defender on defense it's looking at his behavior after the snap. If he bites on run, you could pull it out. I don't think it's going to be good. If I had to guess, I would tell you it's going to suck. Because this is what I would do. If I could do this, right, Zan? If I could do this, I would want this guy to play the quarterback. Say this is, this is a triple option. If the quarterback can't run, it sucks. because This sucks because this guy can get that guy. But if the quarterback can run, which in the Chip Kelly scheme, in the real RPO, he can run. And you got two guys, and you pretty much just need somebody to get the quarterback. You need to pick which one your user is going to get. Now, I'm assuming there's going to be an inside zone here, a base, so you're going to need to stop that. So, in my idea, I would try to be my self-guard the running back, whether bring this guy in, bring this linebacker in, try to shoot the gap on this run, 
And then let this guy get the quarterback and this guy get the outside guy. Yeah, the corner looks like a whole dickhead. Yeah, he's running after the quarterback. Because it's a triple option. This is your running back, running back, and quarterback, really. And really, these two dickheads out here, like, what, what, what are we going to cover for here? Come on, boys. Let's get some eyes. Or Because, I don't know. Defender on defense looking at his behavior after the snap. If he bites on run, you can pull it out, throw to your He's receiver, going to the quarterback. If he sits I'm telling you, this one, I'm telling you, I really don't think the RPO is going to be tough. Gain yards on the ground. Lastly, the read. This is more like the traditional triple option play. You're going to read two to three defenders after the snap, look at their behavior, then decide if you want to hand it off to your running back, keep it with your quarterback, or throw it to the receiver. We actually have over 200 RPO plays in our playbooks this year. 220. That's a lot. 220 plays. And how many of those are going to be in formations with good passing plays? That is okay. very that, that, that's the key to it, man. If you put it in a, in, in a – imagine if there's a run pass option, like a run or read option with a bubble screen and trips tight end. Now that – okay, now that would be annoying. That would be tough. You know what I'm saying? But if it's in a formation without good running plays, it's going to be – now this is going to suck. Is in the game. Away, see that. Fans. What if there's like dots in, in Philly right special? Here. There it is there right it is. there. We also have a lot of jet sweep touch pass concepts. You're seeing the Chiefs and the Rams, teams like that using. Now, I, I will tell you this might be tough with uh, with shotgun tight because you know there's going to be decent pass plays in shotgun, shotgun tight. This is all amazing. Thank you so much, Glenn. I cannot wait for this game. And we've, we've dropped a lot of awesome info here about Madden 20 here at EA Play. I think that's I it. I was going to say, once again, yeah. I'm Adam Rank. If you want that's about it for the gameplay they showed. Was that really all the gameplay for the stream? We didn't see like, anybody play at all. Well, I think Compression does have Gucci runs. I feel like Tight Offset has the old one trap, has inside zone, has draw. I, yeah, but I think the Compression, if you added that with some good pass plays, that stupid little flip, would be pretty tough, honestly. We'll see. Yeah, I don't think the single back will ever be good. Listen, if you can't pass at a high level out of the formation, it will not be good. Might be good to win some games. It won't be elite, if that makes more sense. If you cannot pass out of a formation, every, I, that's how I feel. If you can't go into a game and pass out of your formation every single play, it won't be elite. You know, the run has to almost be... A bonus it can't be the main thing like I can't think about now you and man you guys honestly a lot of you in the chat know more than me and have better minds than me of a formation that was super successful that the main threat of it was the run now the biggest thing I can think about in the last four or five years is wham but one it was never successful at any MCS level the furthest person to take wham anywhere at an elite level is carry and honestly he probably passed out of Deuce Close better than he ran. Now, you guys can help me. You know, you guys can help me as far as, as, far as that's concerned. Pitch and dive and tight slots, very good. Also had good enough pass plays in it. You know what I mean? And, and at the same time, I will tell you when pitch and dive got really good was when Stevie J was able to put, like, Christian Okoye and the super guards at it. Butt fumble with the sub. I appreciate it. But I will tell you, in regs, I remember playing Stevie J in group play in the Man Classic, and it was bad. Because it was just, it was way easier to stop because you didn't have those super athletic guards or those super running backs, you know. So, I, it's just tough. You know, I just don't think the run can be the main threat of your offensive formation. But if those little flip plays or those read option plays or uh, RPO plays come in a formation that have pass plays that are effective, they will be awesome, honestly. Butt fumble with the sub. I appreciate you. Um, The next thing I want to talk about is um pretty much the injury thing. This is Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant got injured last night. I'm sure all you guys watched this. Um, I'm sure you guys watched the finals. I think the finals are pretty much. I I think the the run uh, the finals are pretty much much. It's probably right below the Super Bowl as far as sports in America. It's much much watched for all of us really. Um. And 
obviously KD coming back, he was banged up. KD is one of the best players in NBA. Top three in anybody's list, he's top three player in the NBA. That's not the argument we're having here. He is, and, and with Kevin Durant, the Warriors, I feel, and I think we can agree on, are pretty unbeatable. I think it's the best team that has ever been assembled with Steph, Clay, Draymond, Iggy, KD, Cousins, all these guys healthy. I think we, and I don't know if we'd agree that they would win pretty easily. You know, I, I, but he did, he is hurt. He did come back. And um, first I want to talk about the decision to come back. Okay, KD is a little bit banged up. He knows his Achilles. I'm. This is what I'm not a doctor. I'm not the biggest you know medical person in the world. But I think he kind of ruptured the Achilles. Maybe like you know took the tendon. Maybe you know tore it or tear it a little bit. I don't really know how the leg works. I don't know how tendons work that well. But I'm assuming he injured it a little bit. Got to a point was five weeks ago, a month and a half or something. Uh, he could play. He could walk around. Should definitely always ask for codes in here. But in his mind, his team is about to get eliminated. You know, and as much as we talk about KD's career, his life, God willing, 70, 80 years long. Right? NBA career at max 20 years long. I think for me as a competitive person, never on that level because I'm not athletic as these guys, but I think if he would have sat and watched his team lose and not tried to play, that's something he probably would have thought about forever. You know, and you guys can comment uh, as far as what you guys think, uh, if that's something you would think about, what you would think about in that situation. I just think that being a competitive person, and I personally believe the majority of people in professional sports are competitive. That's why they've been so successful. They're not lollygagging. They're not, they take it serious. That's why they've, they've been able to push themselves to get to that limit. And I think um, he would sit at home and he would think about, damn, I should have tried to play, help my team win. I'm good enough to push them over the top, and I just let my team go out there and lose because I was afraid to get hurt. I feel like me, Chris McFarland, I would think about not trying to play and not risking it the rest of my life more than I would think about, damn, I tried, I tore my Achilles, and you know, I probably shortened my career by two to four years. You know, I, I think it really really would have ate at me watching my team lose without trying to get out there. Now, you guys might be different. You might have thought, thought, thought about the your NBA career. I would think about the rest of my life. It's something I could not think about. I couldn't think about not trying. And part of, and, and as, as I, I hate to compare it to Madden, but it comes down to, like, when I played Skimbo and I had a fourth down, I could have kicked the field goal and tied the game. And the biggest thing that went through my mind is I can't walk out of here without trying, without trying to go for this, without going for everything and with uh, losing to a field goal. You know, I didn't want to tie the game and him come down and get a field goal. I would have thought about that for the rest of my life. You know, I just went out with everything I had. And it might not be the best comparison, but I always think about I don't want to dwell negatively on what could have happened. I don't want to be on what could have, could have, could have. More, you know, that's pretty much where I... uh, where I think about being a competitor and I think he wanted to try it and, and more and a lot of props to him for going out there. And sometimes it's not about what he brought to the court. Like obviously he was hobbled, still looked good. He's still Durant can still shoot, but sometimes it's just about inspiring your teammates. Like when Willis Reed did it, uh, he could barely walk, but it just motivates your teammates. Like if this guy is willing to risk his whole career, if this guy's willing to risk all this pain and come out here and win, what's our excuse for lollygagging? And what's our excuse for not giving all of our effort? That's pretty much what it added to the team, more than just his greatness, honestly. And they uh, they were able to pull out that game, and they got a game six at home on Thursday. They win that, goes to game seven. So, yeah, that's pretty much where it's at. But uh, as far as him getting hurt and the crowd cheering, shout the whack with the host, man. I appreciate you. If you're in new in the stream, this is the Needed Podcast. We do this every Tuesday. Talk about Madden. Talk about gameplay. Talk about competitive side of Madden. We like the competition. But this is what I come to as far as cheering injuries. Now, one, 
part of the initial cheer is, especially in this situation, is, damn, we just got way easier for us to win the championship. It's not necessarily, I don't think it's not necessarily about, ha ha, you got hurt type type of cheer. I think it's a yes, we won the championship. Because I feel like KD is so important, and you see him go down, I feel like it just makes it that much easier to just say, yes, we won the championship. Initially. You know what I'm saying? The initially, initially, I think that's why that's why people cheer. Do you know what I mean? I I think that's where it went from, man. And then I think when you realize, damn, he's really hurt, then it changes. But that's why I say things are different in football and basketball. I think football is a violent sport, dude. I'll be all the way. I think we'll be all the way this. I am happy as hell when the Eagles just put somebody in the dirt. That's the way we grew up from Buddy Ryan to Jim Johnson, Ray Rhodes. These guys, listen, I love, I love when my team just punishes somebody. I'm not a, a tort, tear to ACL. I'm not that type of person because those. I feel like those are way more damaging, I'm assuming is the word. But I just like... I, three specific times in my life, I, I'll tell you right now, I've been beyond happy. Brian Dawkins killed Ad, Algie Crumpler. Algie Crumpler rolled around on the ground like a baby. And I'll tell you, look, I cheered my mind. Brian Dawkins killed Algie Crumpler. And I and, and, and if you're if you don't cheer that, you know what I mean? Now I don't understand. Now obviously Crumpler rolled around. He came back in the game. He was not dead. He did not break a leg. He did not tear anything. He did not miss time in his career. But he rolled around the ground with a concussion, whatever he had. And I'd say it's the big, one of the biggest highlights in Eagles history, period. Reggie Bush. Sheldon Brown absolutely killed Reggie Bush. Killed him. Decimated him. Once again, rolled, crawled around the ground like he had no insides. Honestly. And like you said, I said in the chat a bunch of times, Brandon Cooks got completely knocked out of the game. Not only did I cheer my ass off and was hype as anybody, that's the most physical you can get in football. I drew the picture of Brandon Cooks getting killed and got Malcolm Jenkins to sign it. That's how much I worship that hit. That was one of the biggest plays in the Super Bowl. And I cheered the hell out of it. Now, is that different from cheering when KD got hurt? I, I feel like it's different just because of the nature of football. Football is a violent sport. It is a, you know what I mean? It's a man-on-man, like, I'm more of a man than you type of sport. It's not It's not really about, it's not really about, I want him to get, honestly, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, yes, I want to see, I want to see my players knock players out of the game. I, I just don't, I think hitting, hitting Brandon Cooks and knocking him out of the game, yes. I mean, am I wrong for cheering that? I thought it was a huge play. And I'm like, as an Eagle fan, I'm kind of glad that Brandon Cooks got knocked out of the game. God bless him. Hope he lives a long, healthy life. I don't want him to lose any career. But yes, I am happy he got knocked out of the game. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, I'm not going to be like, damn, I'm, I'm glad. I want to win the game. So by Malcolm Jenkins knocking Brandon Cooks out of the game, it made it easier for the, the Eagles. You know, I, I mean... I don't know. I think in the moment, people really don't. In the moment, you don't take the time to step back and see what type of impact that could have on the person or what type of impact it could have on that person's career and their family. You don't really see that right away. You don't really, that doesn't really go through your head right away, I'm assuming. It don't really, like, it's not about that. It's about the game. It's about the series. It's about the team, really. That's what I'm saying, Kip. I feel like, I just said, I feel like it's different. I feel like it's completely different. But I will also be honest. About 10 years ago, the Sixers played the Bulls. Now, the Derrick Rose was devastating. Completely different situation. And I feel like and I feel like the injury the injury kind of matters. Derrick Rose was a devastating injury for the NBA, for sports, for everything. But I will tell you this right now. In like game four or five, I think it was game four, when Joakim Noah twisted his ankle, ha, I was in the crowd. Yes. Yes. Didn't tear his knee up. 
Dan Terra's Achilles, anything like that. Twisted his ankle. Best believe trolling ass know it. Yes, we got cheered. He got hurt. And I would be the most... I, and all of Philly did. Like, really. You know, Joakim Noah was the biggest troll in the world. Y'all don't understand. Like, I, I will be honest. I, I am probably one of the biggest Joakim Noah fans in the world. Sucks. He's all effort, all energy, all passion. I love that about players. You know what I'm saying? And that's pretty much... And 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 he trolled the... It's like kind of like Draymond. It, it just, it wasn't nothing, it wasn't devastating. You know what I'm saying? It was just, when it first happened, man, I'll tell you. I mean, I'll, I'll be the first one to be honest. Because I was in the crowd. Is he used to sit back and say, you want to trip? Sixers were in a battle. Noah had to get, Noah had to get trolled. I mean, you're right about that. But that's what I'm saying. At the time, you don't think about that stuff. At the time... You're, you're 10 beers in, you're in there the whole day, your passion is I want my team to win the game. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's not something where a day later you're like, ha, 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 I'm glad this person got injured. Where at the time, that's how it comes off. But at the time, it's just an instant reaction for the most part. Yeah, exactly. Uh, my, I was too young for Michael Irvin. Um... Michael Irvin was the biggest troll, most hateable player probably on the Cowboys. But anything, and, and I will also tell you guys this, as far as Michael Irvin is concerned, I don't think that's a cheerable. Like I said, the Noah thing, the Noah thing with the ankle wasn't as big a deal to me as the Derrick Rose or the KD or something like that because it wasn't, I'm out for my life. And ride the rebel. That's how I feel, man. Yeah, I mean, I I I can tell you the initial thing. It's not about that player. It's not about. I hope you stay hurt. I hope you miss time in your career. Initially, it's about. Yes, my team's path has just become easier. Whether it's NBA playoffs or NFL playoffs or whatever it may be. Um, sometimes you're cheering for your team's path getting easier rather than that person getting hurt. Now, some things are definitely out of line. Uh, and I, I, I'm pretty sure I, I'm a believe that most people have good hearts and they wouldn't do anything like that, but I will definitely, uh, as far as anything, anything that's like, like, I feel like a neck injury, even a knee, a kill. I feel like that's like life, like the rest of your life isn't going to be that great. Maybe not in 20 years, but the 30 years, maybe your knee hurts again or something like that. And the neck, obviously, it can be super life changing. So those are a little different. And um, and and as far as Michael Irvin, that was probably 30 years ago now. Like I would want to say in the 90s and 2000. Yeah, it's probably close to 30 years. So the advancement just on, just on, you know, the awareness of the neck and the head and all that has been greatly changed to the point where now if someone's laying down on instantly I think now when someone's laying down instantly on the ground like that I think it's more of a scaring thing for anybody and also you say that about KD's injury could be career altering I think it will make him maybe his career will fall off first of all Durant has already had foot problems he's already missed a lot of time in his career People kind of forget how long Durant's actually been in the NBA. And uh, he has missed seasons. So, his, you know, his feet, his ankles, all this stuff has already been kind of banged up. I think um, the Achilles will definitely shorten his career. I, But I also believe somebody that tall and can shoot that well, a la Dirk Nowitzki, can play a really long time. You know, it's never like, even if Durant got half as slow as he is, I think he can play a long time. Also, I feel like even if he misses next year, he will get whatever max contract he can pretty much from any single team in the NBA that has the money to offer him a max contract. I still fully believe they would offer him a max contract. Like I said earlier, he's one of the top three players in anybody's list in the NBA, and he's going to be that for once he gets over this, he's going to be that for at least another five years. So I guarantee he gets the easiest mass contract of his life. So I don't think it's really going to affect him that much. Yeah. 
So that's I think I think his career is going to be fine. And these guys now, I also believe with you know with social media, with the shoes, all these different things, I think. Uh, their ability to market themselves is going to be not only their career, you know, their career as far as in the NBA, it's not just going to be that. They're going to have their lives to make money, their lives to be a brand. Like when LeBron retires from the NBA five years, ten years, whatever it may be, he's not just going to disappear. You know, so there's going to be something LeBron everywhere. And these guys are getting so much better at marketing their brand and, and investing in other opportunities and building what they have made from the NBA that I think these type of players, LeBron, Kobe, uh, KD, even even a Carmelo or somebody like that, will be around as long as they want to be, honestly. Yeah, D-Rose definitely, his injury was definitely probably the worst NBA, honestly. But... Enough of the NBA talk. This is a Madden podcast. That is why they're here. I want to go over one of the best games. Uh, one of the best games of the what was it? Of the Madden. We're still on Madden 17. Cause one day Kib did come in here and say, "K Dance, what's up?" Like I said, Kib did say and say, "Let's say all on Madden 17." And you know what I said? That's a great idea. Madden 17, best Madden in the MCS era. So let's go ahead to this one right now. This was Problem versus Skimbo. Probably, I mean, one of the top three games in Madden 17. Definitely game. I definitely need to get some Madden 16 on the stream. But we're going to stay with Madden 17 until I run out of games. We got something special for you. So we got the this is one Skimbo versus Problem. Madden 17. Playing the number one player. This was in LA. This was in LA. I remember. And problem, problem still. Had, obviously, LA is still on the list of Madden communities as far as the country. You know, as far as that's concerned, it is the list of you know best Madden states in in the country. I mean, behind obviously Philly is probably still number one. Then you got the East Coast. Some, I mean, I don't know if you want to put the East Coast in one group. I don't know how Philly somehow as one city goes against whole states and whole regions. But Philly is still the highest in, you know what I mean, in Madden. Yes. Now look. And then you probably go Florida. It's either Philly. I don't know if you want to group the East Coast, Philly with the East Coast. Because East Coast, I think you, nah, Blocky. Florida is definitely, Florida's a strong too. I think you got to go East Coast and DMV. What if we put New York and Philly together and then we put DMV in a separate? Like split the East Coast into two. Because if it's just the East Coast, I feel like it's kind of unbeatable. But if you put New York and Philly together, then the entire DMV, Maryland, uh, Baltimore, Virginia, all that together, I think that's pretty good, you know. But, like I said, after that, I would probably go Philly, New York. Then I'd probably go DMV, probably still. Or I might go Florida. Florida actually has a lot of talent. No. Bruh. Baltimore's in. Baltimore has to be in there, Jet. But Florida actually has a lot of man talent. But, kid, that's how I don't understand. Like, okay, is LA one thing? Are we just going cities? Because Philadelphia is just a city. Philadelphia can't just go against whole states. I, I don't feel like that's fair. I mean, we kind of can in the argument. You know what I mean? But to me, Philadelphia can stand up to any state. But is that really what I have to do? Does Phil, if it, is it Philadelphia, then New York, and New Jersey, then the DMV? Like, that's what I'm saying. Is like, How do we break it down? You know? So far as I'm concerned, let's put it this way. East Coast is number one. I'm putting Florida two. I'm putting Cali at three. Then probably the Midwest, like where Mo, Ohio to Chicago, that type of vibe. Texas is that Cali is not number one. That's what I'm saying, though, Kip. How can Cali go just against Philly? Like, how is that like logically fair? This is a this, mind you, this is an entire another topic. Honestly, and I might have to have people on the podcast from different regions, you know.
That's what I'm saying. How, how does that work? So New York. That's what I'm saying. So Blocky. So Philly goes with New York and New Jersey. That's what I'm. I'll, I'll be cool with that. And then you can put Baltimore and Baltimore to Virginia. And put that in another group. All right. Yeah. That's what I'm, I'm definitely taking New York and Philly over anybody. And then I'm going Florida. Then I might go. Cal- then I might go DMV. All right. Anyway, so this is in LA. Problem definitely has a good contingency out there. All the old heads, whether it's uh, what you gonna call it. One nine was there. Uh, problems boy Sammy was probably there. Reality was there. And these guys have been doing this a long time. And 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 one thing about Madden that's changed a lot because of these live events being a lot more. Um, Produced, I want to say. I mean, there's not as much crowd to it. Man, 17 was the last year we had a crowd where people could really cap and people could yell and scream and all this stuff. And Problems Boys were definitely there. So, and, and my point is, it's a home court advantage. Now, and I will tell you before this game, and kid who's in the chat can attest to, they gave Problem the game plan. Uh, he played defense like I've never seen him play. And and, and part of this to me is is what makes problems great is that he will listen and he will use it. You know, I I never saw a problem man up this many people and really like play play more like you know I'm saying play more like more like a younger player more than I mean he just really he would problems always been more of a basic guy, real kind of like Skimbo was on defense. Really I'll play cover two, I'll blitz, I'll make a play with my user. But this game, he really got the game plan. You know what I'm saying? He really mixed up his coverages. Skimbo, at this point, we went over it last week, I believe. Oh, no. Last one was me versus Problem. Before that, it was Skimbo versus Kiv. Yeah, exactly. See, Kiv knows. they, they Y'all all broke down the game plan. At this point of the year, Skimbo was, the, like, by far, I, 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 by far the best player. This is when Skimbo was, like, super, super tough. This was probably after. I, honestly, he was probably the best player during Man Bowl for the rest of the year. Honestly, but it was pretty much. Not only did he have Z spot, obviously he has Z spot. He wants to have Demarius Thomas up the middle. Now, I, as, and this is one thing that pisses me off about Skimbo. Every time I'm mentioned, they bring up Skimbo. But the only reason he had Demarius Thomas was because of Dub Dot Dubby. I'll, I'll just put that out there. Uh, yeah, it was Z-Spot, but at this point of the year, he was swerving the hell out of people. Like, just a lob swerve on cover two or cover three, whatever it may be, he was going to kill people. And we'll just start this. I'm going to run it. How are my levels? This is this too loud? That's how This is going to be quick. This is a condensed version. It's going to move, really. And this was nickel normal. Not bringing down the safeties. That's the is that the fake clowny or the real clowny? At this time, problem had a fake clowny. I forget who it was, but he had a fake clowny. I, it was some bum. Oh lord, Ram! I think that's Ramsey, little Ramsey. I I forget. I wish I knew all the players. We could look at the team really. But like I said, this is the point of the year where nickel normal really got ridiculous. Nickel normal flipped, shift the other way, bring the safeties down. It's really got kind of wild. There's the fake clowny, number 93. Five yard in route. Going for a bomb. There you go. Just cover two. Oh, he got to get in there. It looked like he could have got in there. So it's looking like a great drive for Skimbo early. I don't remember how good the quarterback sneak was. Obviously, Skimbo liked it. Don't know why he went timeout there. Now, if you remember, as the toss works right there, this was one note I'll make. I'll definitely talk about is that this was before quick audibles. 
This was you were stuck with the audibles you were given. So when you come out, there is no, I can go to toss, I can go to fullback dive, I can go to quarterback sneak. You were stuck with what, you know, what you picked at the play call screen, really. And it's really uh, weird to see as we watch these gameplays and see nobody spinning, nobody juking, anything like that. At, uh, there we go, audible down to a little problem, typical stuff. And I, I honestly told Skimbo about baselining that set as he gets a lucky knockdown. I never wanted him to baseline any of the tight. I've, I, I, and here it is again with the baseline press because I feel like you're just asking your quarterback to or your corners to really get stopped or to get blocked and then a big play happen. Look at the little speed juke, man. I tell you, the first person to put me on the speed juke, rest in peace, was spot me. Please. And you see him there unbaselining. As both stop the spot me please was the first one to put me on that little speed juke. Probably one of the only moves other than uh tackle battle stiff arm that really worked this year in Madden. That's just a problem getting screamed at. This is what Skimbo was really good. Move that he would run DB fire, move these corners out a little bit and bring the safeties down a lot like nickel blitz. You see it again, we get the fourth and ten early. And fourth down to me, I, I would bring everybody. Hell no. See, I was the only one capping in the crowd. Because Bugs, he was there. Bugs is like the, the slow, quiet, the slow, quiet, push. Like, Bugs is just a little fist pump type. That was a good dot. Let's see, at this point, I mean, Skim will probably just, he want to score another touchdown. Problem is a guy is a runner. I mean, he's a defensive player. If you can get a lead on him, it's definitely going to be, it's definitely going to change the game if you're able to do that. Five-yard in route, unstoppable. That's the route that, that made me great. Yeah, Bugs didn't have enough energy initiated. He didn't eat enough food of the day. I'm saying, just take it. Good job. Kid, this game plan is getting killed. Yo, kid, this game plan was getting popped early in the game. Yeah. Now, now I will tell you, we complain about a lot of things. In this game, that's a pick. In this game, that's an interception. Madden 19, that's a pick every time. Well, kid, what was the game plan? Skimbo was good at this point, though, man. So everything's going easy right now. I don't, but this is before Skimbo had a belt. This was also scary Skimbo, really. That, is that, that might have been a pick in Madden 19 too, really. So one-on-one -on -one to Moss. Goes to Moss one-on-one -on -one again. Drops it again. But problem's not that type of player. So three downs in a row, he leaves one on one again. So what what Skimbo said, honestly, is because this game got ugly. But out of three chances, out of three chances of that play, the percentages in this game was that he probably could have caught one. You know, and 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 the fact he didn't catch one kind of changed the tide of the game. Gave problem a little bit more life to where if he was down 14 nothing, a little bit different of a game, honestly. Ramsey was a rookie. He had a most feared car with real low cap. Ah, problem going with a little W4 verts. I like it.
history of this game. And remember, this game's been oh, a bunch of Will been around, around Will Rouse has been around a long time. Second and eleven, and they go to Julio. Who is that white safety Skimbo has? Oh, that's Mike Evans. Mike Evans looks white. Mike uh, Skimbo was definitely um Well oh, that was a nice dot and a tough catch. We didn't get a hit right there. Yes, like I said, Skimbo was definitely probably the first person really on tip drill. You know, that was definitely um, one thing Skimbo pretty much was on before anybody. Dude, the way you could audible down and run dive that fast was pretty, pretty vicious. And Pro Size is actually starting to kill. See, what happened in this game is that Skimbo wanted to baseline the shotgun, but not baseline the tight. And the and problems snapping the ball before he can really even do that. That was good defense. Ooh. Get a little more space. You're talking about problems mental. What do you mean when you say mental? The thing is, he is always confident in himself. He's never going to get frustrated. And he's Surpri Ooh, Jesus. That, that was smooth. Pause. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of quick hiking. I think, I don't know if you had to pause in between hot routes in this game. Uh, yeah, because they did have conductor. So you definitely had to pause between hot routes. That was still a thing. Conductor. And, and. In the finals, he had 32 players. Problem might have conductor. He looks like he has Aaron Rodgers, so he might have conductor. Although I didn't really take problem as a conductor guy, but he might have conductor right here. Skimbo wasted a, a shit ton of timeouts. And that will allow for you know the two minute warning to come into play on the next play. Oh, why he burned all them timeouts, but there's Skimbo right there. Third and ten. Make a tackle. There you go. Gets down to the 12. It's going to be fourth and three. We've hit the two-minute warning. And, and Prime's not stupid. He's going to take his points. points. You know, going in for it here is, is pretty dumb because the risk and reward is not that high. He gets the ball a half. He just needs to stay alive. Look at the crowd. That's a real live crowd. Actually, I don't know if that side was live. The other side, I don't know who those people were. Uh, I don't think Skimbo swerved successfully in this game. He tried a bunch of times late in the game, especially when he started getting boxed. When he started getting boxed, he definitely tried. Ooh, that looked scary. And that's kind of what got him boxed. Problem picked off at least one. I mean, he's got a lot of people manned up now. Definitely cross man and manning up a lot of people. And this is what they knew. Yeah, there it is. Dropped right there. You knew, and it looked crazy, but you knew that this streak, if this guy's cross man, Thomas is eventually going to run by him at so many yards. You know, and, and and they just knew that. But what, happened, what was happening here is he was actually getting a real good bump by this linebacker to save that. Because this is Harrison Smith. Damaris Thomas, I want to say, it wasn't like this year. There was no 99 speed dudes. Damaris Thomas, I want to say, one of maybe 93 speed. Harrison Smith wasn't terribly slow. Might have been 91. Makes it third and ten. As you can see, he definitely got a step. He could have caught that pass. And in this game with a rack egg. Yeah, but Harrison Smith wasn't fast enough. Yeah, I'm telling you. That's a good sack. He's going to use his timeout right here. So he's kind of like one of your hot reads when you snap the ball. You need to watch the But I'm telling you, that streak. Almost a good punt, damn, but definitely a big deal not getting inbounds. We'll see the spin. Oh, that spin actually was kind of tough. Big punt return there. Skimbo's normally a nerd as far as punting the ball out of bounds. There's the playmaker. Ooh, that's definitely in field goal range. Now I'm getting pissed off because he should. I, I feel like he should not baseline any of this. Yeah, that's how I feel, boys. It really ain't matter how fast we were. They were going on that. 
Skimbo really had the most basic defense, really. There you go. One timeout. Not want to turn the ball over right now. Second and ten. Here comes the blitz. Gets it out. And Julio. Let's see what problem. Problem. Let's see what he does here. Let's assume he takes a shot. Maybe the wheel route. Play action again. There's the blitz. Ooh, risky. He definitely want to take his three right now. For a field goal. Oh my goodness. Look at that, how slow that is. That focus kicker. Oh, the swerve was definitely good for Madden. You won't get me to say anything bad about swerve ever. It was bad. It was bad for Madden and Hole because too many people complained about it. It was the way that I could beat the shit out of uh, out of you know casuals. Really, big kick return here. Skimbo was a nerd on kick returns. Really, didn't get the block he wanted. This was one of the best games. Um, that I ever watched. Oh, he definitely caught that. See, he just swerved two people right there. Alright, so second half, Skim only up four, so it's definitely definitely a battle. And he's got the ball. I, I honestly at this point I, I would if I was problem, I would keep coming back to that dive. Uh Skimbo had why damn I don't have that play anymore and uh the amount of plays they took out of the game is just like what? It's only been out for like twenty eight years or something like that. I mean, and, and one thing about Skimbo, and I'll tell this from personal experience playing Skimbo, as the game goes on, the more you realize you can pretty much run the same play. You know, and this seems to be like the main play that, that problem is getting real comfortable running between this and dive. And there he goes. He can't unbase a line, or he can't man a line fast enough before problem snaps the ball. Oh. Ooh, Bosa with a good hit. So I would keep coming back to this. What's funny about Man 17 is nobody had a D tackle. Yeah, that's one thing you gotta realize about. Like I said, this is Skimbo. This is pretty much prop and, and problem's not stupid. He's gonna stay in this. See, he come back to the same play, and he got to realize that that drag route is pretty much going to be open any time. Because this was before... One, I'll pause. One, we had previous play, which kind of worked. You know, and also the thing about why previous play was tougher this year was because you could not change the deep blues. So if you were in cover two, that's pretty much what you were in. You know, now... Now you can change your cover two to cover four. You can change your co whatever it may be. You, I feel like you can change your coverage so much more now that it's not as easy to just sit. It's not as easy to, you know, dot the same defense and use previous play to your advantage. So it's definitely different because you know Skimbo's in cover two every single play. Whereas in Madden 18 and Madden 17, you could change your cover two to cover three and Skimbo can come down and actually lurk that drag. But because Skimbo was sitting cover two every time, he has to run down the seam or down the wheel route every time. So I promise I realize I can throw this drag every play. And Skimbo's whole philosophy a lot of times was, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to wait later in the game to make the adjustment I need to make. He said, I will keep giving up the same thing, but I'm going to wait till later in the game to make the adjustment I need to make. And good players have good pocket. Good dot right there. Great animation, too, to be able to catch that. So this is when Skimbo starts getting the vibe like, 
starting to get in the vibe like, okay, I done lost so many championships. I just lost the last championship. I don't have a belt yet. He starts getting in his own head. Really. You know I'm saying you could tell that because now first play out of the gates. Oh, good defense there by Dion. But this is, and Buzz can attest to this, is that this is the first play we go to out of the huddle. Let me see if I can get this. We go streak, 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 wheel. We're not looking for the little shit anymore. We just went down 13 to 10. We're going for the gusto. We're going all out, balls out, really. No drags out here. No. Has Randy Moss and knocked away Dion Sanders on the cover. 202 to play. Second and ten for Skimbo. And he's gonna test him again. And they try to swerve him again. And Dion rises to the challenge once more. And problem talked about he has adjustments for Skimbo. The adjustment he made is he took Dion Sanders out of that slot. And put him on the outside so he can keep up with Randy Moss in that deep ball. That's a world class adjustment right there. Down to a fourth down, man. Big fourth down coming up, Coltrane. And on fourth and three, he's going to roll the dice. Got to watch his back, leak out the backfield, and then the C route. And he finds Jimmy. That was another W dot right there that Skimble took. You know, no big deal. And picks up the first Definitely was another W dot. Oh, look at Nano's detection. Here in the championship. And he's going to test him again. Definitely got picked. Deion Sanders picks off Skimbo. See the total yards. I mean, this was so much more fun, dude. I'll be honest. It's so back to the same play. Oh, dang. I actually got a shed right there. It looks like Cliff Averill. Sacked for a loss of one. Third and 11 coming up. Ball of the football in the pocket. Ooh. Drop that. And this one will fall to the turf. Incomplete. So fourth and eleven. Yeah. And he's gonna punt this one away. Those guys have headphones on. They're listening to music and white noise to block our voices. No, nah, bad punt again by but problem, man. You gotta get that out of bounds. But he didn't get that much. This one skimble's like I should stop swerving. Just a fill goal separates these two players. And we got thirty seconds to go. And he's gonna test him. Got him there, boom. Son, you. That was number one. So how much? Fa who? I don't know who the hell number one was. I wish I could tell you guys. So this, honestly, this streak to Demarius Thomas, we saw it dropped in earlier in the first half. Now this time he burns this cross man. Look from the safety position to the other side. Once he get, I'm telling you, once he gets 40 yards, he just absolutely gets cooked. And we got 30 seconds to go, and he's gonna test him deep. Thomas. Yeah, it was a campus hero, but I, don't, I really don't remember who it was. Old school. All of a sudden, we're streaking with Skimbo. I wonder if Mudhead actually has um Madden 17 somewhere. Oh, it does. Prime was so blessed this whole tournament with the kick returns. Let me see it again. Skimble's sick. Let's see this kick return again. Prime was so blessed with kick returns in this tournament. So now the momentum is back with Skimbo. And another spin move. Here goes Deion Sanders. Will they catch him? No. Bob Felicia touchdown. And there you go, see? Yeah, I'm telling you, he got hella kick returns. And that's sickening, dude. Especially when Brown's playing such a good defensive game and you're battling for points. You just took the lead. So now you're right back where you were. Bottled up at the 24. He knows we're on the NFL network. How Skim respond though. And Jimmy Graham takes a big hit from Harrison Smith. That might be the final play of the quarter. Back and forth, these competitors go. My man Dave with his uh, 14 Just months. Took the lead. Problem. Returns so we got a battle. Skimbo got the ball back. In two games. And here we go. 
second and seven. Ball at the 27, trailing by three is Michael Skimbo. This at, at time was what made him so tough was doing that flat route and getting so many yards, man. He's a big stop here. Ricky Williams. Clowny just dominating. He's going to lose yardage, and now it's fourth and two. The play of the game thus far is now. Back to the W dot. Fourth and two. And the shotgun, Rodgers. He's gonna throw that was a read. I honestly, I want to say, I want to say right here, problem. And I don't know. I feel like he's been manning up the running back all game. This wasn't manned up. I feel like this is a hard flat. And that's what problem did versus me against corner strike all game. I do that shit every time. I feel like the read right away. And I feel like the whole game, problem was manning up the running back. Right? So... I think Skimbo was like, the running back's not going to be open. So he's looking for the tight end early. But the running back, I felt, was open right off the bat. Right here, I think the running back's the throw. Maybe a, another half a second till he gets about right here. But that's not manned up. Unless that guy's just that damn slow. I guess he might be. Shoot. But these dudes got really close. It looked like he even had the C route there. What the hell did Problem do on this play? Let me look at it again. And the shotgun. Rogers. Yeah, definitely had to see route. Definitely, he had everybody. I think. Hartflat was asked if it was from if it was from like the linebacker or defensive end. If you had a corner to Hartflat, he picked six that shit. But it's hard to put a corner to Hartflat on that side. Wow, that was a lucky ass catch. That one. And let's be honest, it's Randy Moss. <laughs> he does that. We saw him do it in real life. He was overpowered in real life, and sometimes he sure as heck is overpowered in Madden. Check 50, check 50. Your reset. Second and 10 from the 17. It's a field goal game. Third and 10 now. I guess we missed that play. Good job here, uh, EA Sports. Missed that play. Clearly in completion. Oh Lord! Talk about Stevie Reed. That was rough. What in the world? Yeah, this was probably the most sick I've been watching a human being pass a football. No challenge because he needs those timeouts in the second half. Scott, it looks like corner strike. Too risky. I guess he wants to throw this. Ah, uh, he kind of got bumped a little bit. It was almost a dot. And if you go back to this time of year, it's tough to go back. It's like this is when people were motioning in this corner route and he would beat them. That little bump right there and he stopped. Kind of messed him up a little bit. It's Kendricks. And now problem. Able to be the one on the right end of that one. Oh my goodness. So that was definitely uh I see problems a thousand percent. Now problem is like I wanna Maybe it's a little too conservative. That was a good shed right there. I, I think I, I would have went back to the dive. The dive kind of been his best run so far. But he's actually has been killing him out of this. With three timeouts off his back foot, he'll pick up the first down and more out to the 47 yard line. So I don't know why he's in like the dive. I, I, I'm gonna pause it. I feel like the dive has been killing him. I don't know why he's in these random pistol runs. I feel like the, the, the tight slash dive has really been precise. Wasn't that good? No, he wasn't crazy. But I'm saying like the I don't know why he went away from the dive. Pistol formation. Seeing so you get no yards on a, a zone out of pistol, that was pretty. That was pretty shitty. You know, and we'll be interested to see when Skimbo uses. Skimbo's letting the clock run here. Now, let me take this back. I might have used the timeout there. I, no, I feel like I missed four plays. What are we doing here, EA Sports? This was first down. God damn it. So this run's going to take it to the two-minute warning. So I'm assuming the problem is going to run on second down. 
and not get any yards. I don't know what run he went to. I but okay, so now we get a third and ten. Problem gets this first down, can ice the game out. Obviously, he's had two runs. He has kept the clock running. But now he's at a third and ten to where he could run again. Make Skimble use a timeout. Uh, as far as, I mean, obviously he would punt if he doesn't get any yards here. And we, we see, we already saw he does the pass play. So it's definitely a. This is. That's a big drop. And I'll tell you why that's a big drop. And I, and one thing about this pass is I think Prime Pass let it up. Made it a little more easy. Because I feel like you can always get this on the clouds. He went up right into that Landon Collins. Because if he catches that, one, the clock is running. Skimble uses a timeout. So now Skimble only has two timeouts. One, he's at a fourth and two or a fourth and three, which is definitely an area where he could go for it. Now at a fourth and ten, you, ha you have to punt being up three points. So that... That, that was a tough little three-play sequence offensively for Problem, where he could have iced the game and did not allow. Looks like a great punt. Lucky bounce for Skimbo right there, man. There's really no way to control that. And, man, that would have been huge if he could have got him at the two-yard line. So he has all the time in the world and needs a field goal. That's okay. Quick pass to Jimmy Graham. He's knocked out of bounds at the 26. Second and four now. Field goal and tie and send it into overtime. Touchdown. Skimbo has the C route every play. Jimmy Graham once again. This yeah, that's what I'm saying, Wesley. He got a chance to go for it and end the game. Yeah, for sure. That's a big drop. But I, the only reason I feel like he dropped it is because he did pass lead it up. And you know what Brown's going to go for it. He put Ramsey out there now, too. And at some point, you got to say, look, no matter whether you want to go, that's the third time. Honestly, I think that's the fourth time. He dropped one, caught three. I think, you know, at some point you have to realize this isn't the setup, you know. And, it, and maybe you can get to the point where you have to put Dion at that guy. Really, I don't know. But that's definitely something that's killed him the whole game. It's pretty much the only offense problem he's had. And continually do that same adjustment is pretty rough. Problem needs a touchdown. He's got three timeouts. He'll use his first timeout. So two left, 38 seconds to go at the 43. Needs a touchdown. And if you're skim, that's where you want problem completing passes in the middle of the field where the clock needs to run and he needs to waste timeouts. You don't want him getting to the sidelines. Ooh, process fighting. Process falls down and bounce. Does get the first down, but he'll use his second timeout. Just one lonely timeout remains. So first and ten. He went the slant zone right here. Oh, that's killer. Drag for two yards. He's saving the timeout. I might have burned it. It's ticking. We've seen problem get vintage in this situation before, though, Scott, in this tournament against Mo. He's had three comebacks in a row. Now Skimbo in quarter three deep. Never had that swerve. Good dot, though. That is a nice throw along the sidelines. Clock stops. 11 seconds left in this one. Problem finished second a year ago as Stiff won the title. Wow, look at Problem really speed out routes, really getting in place. One throw to the end zone. Oh, I remember this play too. This was a good play. It doesn't happen yet. Oh, Lord. This was actually a sneaky little dot. Damn. If he would have put a flat over there, maybe. Yeah, that was definitely a, definitely a sneaky little dot. I think if he could have put some type of flat zone to try to hold this guy and keep put a little coochie spot. But really. Yeah, he could have used that time. At that point, you're really in a tough spot. 31, you throw this drag play. You know, call a timeout there. You got 26 seconds, two speed outs. You're at, you maybe you get four throws into the end zone. So that was that game. Definitely, I, I, if I came back to this game, 
Probably 1,000% lost this game on this set of downs. You know, if he gets a first down here, you know, it's pretty much pretty much GG's with the time. And uh, now we got a run play here. I don't know if we have this in another uh, YouTube. Another YouTube that I can actually see what plays he, cho he chose because that was definitely a... Uh... Oh, here we go. Yeah, this was the uh, this was the first down. I feel like this set of play calls is what killed him. You know. Like this, because these are the ones. Because like I said, I feel like the dive. I feel like the dive is definitely killing him more than pistol. You know what I'm saying? Pistol zone. I'm not a fan of this call, you know. And Skimbo actually got sheds, and then he had 31 fighting, and he had a good user on that play. Really blew that up. And I, this go to two minute warning. But for me, in these situations, is uh, it's kind of the hardest time to pass is on third down. I think if you're gonna sneak a pass in here, and problem knows if he gets this first down, I mean he's gonna be able to isolate a game. So for me, I. If I was going to pass, and problem being a conservative guy, he's going to run again on second down. But for me, it's going to be easier to pass on first down or second down than it will be on third down. But he's hoping I can get four or five yards on third on second down here. Uh, and he go, what does he go to? Uh, a a little dive. That was a good user by Skimbo to blow that up, really force him back in the middle. No yards. So now you have kind of have to go for this. You know. So, here we go. I mean, this is... Now, the one thing about Skimbo, man, is that Problem had been running that one play the whole game. Now, for me, you got to know that Moss down the seam, 81 right here. Skimbo's going to have to run with that. He sends out, he sends out all five people. For me, if you could just high-low one side, streak Moss or... And block somebody. He has to get rid of the ball right away. But like I said, he leads that up right in the traffic. If he catches that for you know for six yards, even falls forward for seven, eight, he probably goes for it. Can't go for a fourth and ten. And I think those three play calls are probably the ones he wants to have back. But then at the same time, as we go back to this a million times, man. If, if you get beat by the same thing, when somebody really doesn't have anything high-powered, you know, to continually give him this and to give it to him for the third or fourth time, oh, I wasn't right there, but I think I believe it's the next play. To give him that streak again for the win, you know what I mean? That's, that's tough. That's probably something else he's looking back at. You know, but as much as, man, problem... Definitely uh, between the kick returns against Joke more than, more than Skimbo. The kick return against Skimbo hurt, but it wasn't the reason he was in the game. His defense was playing really good. and But to give him this again. Ah, oh, man. And what's crazy about, about this play is because of what you have to do against corner strike, what you have to do against the running back, hard, flat, all these zones to stop these three receivers. It allows Skimbo just that much more time to bail out because there's no pass rush over here. If he if he blitzes five and this guy gets around the corner, Skimbo can't just roll up as easily as he can on this play. But because of all this coverage over here, hard, flat, manned up on a running back, all these people he can roll out to the left easily, bomb it up, and score a touchdown. Now, I, I will tell you, I don't remember if you could send the spy in Madden 17. as That's, that's about the last play I want to look at. But really, I don't remember... I don't remember if you could send a spy in Madden 17. I really don't. I want to say you could. But uh, that would have been helped to have a spy out there. Send a spy when he rolled out like that. But, man, that was a great game. Uh, just play calling the offense. Problem with them two runs, getting negative, no yards, getting to a third and ten. Pass lean that one pass up, getting broken up, really forcing him to punt. I just can't give up the same play, uh, you know, four times in a game, really. Uh... Yeah, so that was pretty much 
uh, you guys saw the crowd. I mean, the atmosphere for that game was one that would invite people in. Was something that they could have packed. Because as much as uh, it was probably 10 rows of seats, maybe eight long, so it was probably room for 100, 100 plus people in there. I think you could have sold, you could have got 500 people to watch that game. You know, maybe even more than that. That game, the atmosphere was crazy. The atmosphere was great. This was the last tournament that they had like that, pretty much. You know, that was it. Then they got rid of the live, the live, uh, well, I guess the Madden Classic kind of had it. Madden 18 kind of had a lot. I want to say it was a little more limited, though. They didn't just let anybody in there, really. So, yeah, Madden 17 was great, man. It was a lot of fun, and that was a great game. So, probably one of the best games of Madden 17. But, with that being said, um, I'm going to give away... I'll give away a code. Why not? You guys are here for codes. Nobody, Anybody that asks for codes is not eligible. I will do this. This is going to be... The first one's going to be subs only, boys. I got to support the subs of mine that have, you know, really uh, supported me, even throughout the offseason in the last two years. People with purple badges, red badges, even blue badges, man. Uh, yeah, it was nobody else in there, kid. That's it. So, you guys have definitely been watching these podcasts in, in the Madden offseason. I'm excited to see what the show's going to become when the new Madden comes out. Like I said, there's definitely a lot of um, buzz around Madden right now. Pretty much because of the the new game coming out. It's definitely uh, got everybody ready to play, pretty much. You know. And that's why people are really watching. And I've heard that they're going around sneaking codes into different streams. I heard that's a real thing. Hasn't happened to Dub.W. Thank you, Jack. I appreciate you, man. But lucky I did uh, Kid vs. Kimbo, Madden challenge i did me versus problem i think that's it yeah i think that's it so i'll definitely probably do kid versus journey i can do me versus skimbo man 17 um like i said this i want you guys to comment on youtube comment on what games you guys want to see which games you guys really like so we'll do a giveaway youtube i will give one away for you guys too man so comment below what your favorite game was what game you want to see we're here for the codes, baby. So, that being said, hold my look. The Philadelphia Eagles, D Bell. Can't wait to use these Eagles. Giveaways, subscribers. What does regular mean? Okay. Definitely going to be on subscribers and mods. We're going to go to keyword. Is this nobody? Reggie vs. Shugs. The battle. Uh, keyword is going to be code. So you guys type in code when you get a chance, man. When I Type in code in the chat. I'm telling you, subs only, man. Yo, the Bugs versus Reggie, or the Shugs versus Bugs was disgustingly bad. Oh, my God. You know what the worst part about the Bugs versus Shugs game was? It was during the tournament where they, they thought that broadcast camera was the move. I really do. Also, all players um, that are good, like Blocky and Kiv, and um, you guys are not eligible. I because everybody with MCS points is getting code, so. Yo, and you know what makes me mad about the gameplay camera, you know? Is, like, they try, they do it to try to attract, it's to try to attract. I'll be honest, though. I did start thinking it was hot earlier because you could throw the ball. When people do the ball, you didn't know exactly what was going to happen. You know, whereas normally when we watch Madden, you know exactly, you kind of see the coverage. You see if it's open or not. But in that mode, you didn't know what was going to happen when they do the ball. So it was kind of like, oh, shit, what's going to happen? But, like, they do this, and, and it pisses me off because I, I play a lot of 2K, as you guys know. I like watching 2K. I like watching the Sixers. I like that. So, for me, they do it in 2K. The third quarter, they want to say, this is the broadcast camera time. And it pisses me off. Because the goal of it is, listen, the goal is to try to attract pretty much attract the um 
This is the list of people, by the way. Subs only, man. We're not giving codes to y'all that don't support like Misery. You know I'm saying, although Miz has been a strong supporter, he's just falling off lately, you know. So these are who we got right here. But all right, Bugs is not eligible. Blocky's ineligible. Kiv is ineligible. Imagine me giving a game to Block and Kiv early. Ha! <laughs> Picture that with a Kodak. Ha! <laughs> ha! I'm not. I wouldn't be better than them if I if I had the game three months early. But anyway, what was I gonna say? Um, yeah, but no, but no, but I hate the broadcast camera because, like, I, this is how I feel about esports, right? Is that um, there's so many gamers, there's so many people that play 2K. Like the 2K League will get five thousand people, right? There's so many more people that play 2K. You have to market to the 2K, to the gamers. The gamers are the one that's going to make the game blow up. You know, you're not going to catch a jock that just watches football and turn him into, you know what I'm saying, into all of a sudden a gamer fan. He wants to watch a video game. Hell no. You know what I'm saying? But you will turn the gamer who loves playing the game into a video game watcher. That's how I feel. And I feel like the... The broadcast camera turns away the gamers. You know, I don't know, man. It, it, it's a it's a toss up for me. But here we go. We're gonna roll one. Winner is my man Icon six one five. Icon, whisper me right now, man. You know, I'll hook you up right now, good brother. Following since September thirteenth, two thousand seventeen. Over two years of following, man. I appreciate it, brother. Is this does this automatic? Is this a whisper one or is this oh this you just type? Okay, icon. Let me whisper you real quick. You know I'm saying I'll do one more. I'll do one more. Get your subs in, man. If you want to be eligible for a code, get your subs in, man. You got two minutes. Vilma unel ineligible for a code. Although Vilma might not have any MCS points, so he might have to be eligible. No, I think he made he qualified for a tournament, so he should get one. Vilma ineligible. Yeah, I'm definitely not gonna type it until the broadcast over. All right, boys. I will tell you with this, and I will tell you between me and you, chat. As a man that's had this this beta for a couple, a, a little bit of time. It's not that hot. I'll tell you that right now. It's not that hot. Plus, I've heard that everybody with MCS points, MCS that has qualified for any tournament or anything like that, will 1,000% be given codes in your emails that you use for your account. So, you know, that's why. But we'll definitely roll one more. Let's roll one more, boys. My man, WDE Shanks. Just started following a couple a couple months ago, but man, a subscriber, you get all the love, man. Where we at? One one month subscriber. Hey, man, we'll take it. Hopefully, keep that sub rolling. Sub for one month, nice. I'll disqualify some people, man. Shanks, uh, we don't like the lurkers. We like the people that contribute to the stream. You know what I'm saying? That's all. That's all. But no, one of the things uh, I really wanted to do is really give y'all something else for uh, subbing. And this being said, I mean, guys, where are we at here? This will be making me mad, bro. Like, we got the cleft shirt. I mean, the cleft shirt's a little goofy. I don't really expect none of y'all to really get the cleft shirt. You know what I'm saying? But we got the teams on here. Whatever team you want to rock. If you're a Ravens fan, you know what I'm saying? Get you the Ravens. The Ravens needed gaming shirt. You could grab. You know I'm saying? We could even go back here. You could get the Clef shirt. I'm saying this is the Clef the Guy shirt. 
title is definitely a pen site. That's what I use for my music. I'm saying we got a whole lot of things y'all can grab at the Needed Gaming Store. Hoodies, hats, get your tank tops for the summertime. It's right around the corner. You know, we got the panties in a bunch shirt. How do you guys not support the panties in a bunch shirt? Like, that's fire. Panties in a bunch? Come on, chat. You could grab that. But most importantly, you can just grab the physicality shirt. I made this shirt 15 damn dollars. 15 bucks. You go up here. This is how you sort it. Look. Catalog. Teams. Oh, I only have the teams. Oh, let me look. It's by alphabetical order. See, Ken, and this is why, you know, you're right. I wish I could, but I mean, it's not goddamn rocket science. Oh, I want Minnesota. That's an M. I can go to Minnesota. Oh, I can get the black Minnesota. There it is. Look, that's pretty hot. Oh, now I want to go back to the cities. I got the cities on here. Oh, look, I can get Chicago. If you're from Chicago, boom, there it is. Get you a Chicago Nita shirt. That's kind of fire. We come here. Oh, we want the We Are Man shirts. The We Are Man shirts right here, I have made $13. $13 is the lowest amount of money, so it just it so I don't so I just don't lose money. I wish it was better, really. And then people like that, get me dry fit. What the fuck do I look like? I'm gonna ask you guys that right now. What does this look like? Am I JC Penny herself? Like what do you how you think I have a sweatshop in the back room? I can make you any damn fabric you want? Do you want an alpaca shirt? Do you want a chinchilla chinchilla scarf? It's a goddamn t-shirt. I'm not asking you to buy a whole wardrobe. I'm not dressing you for the Grammys. I need dry fit. I yo, there's nobody worse than the cocksucker that says I need dry fit. Get me and who what type of douchebag are you that you can't wear a regular ass t-shirt? It's crazy to me. Like dead ass. I, I hate yo, honestly, this is why people tell me ask me about teachers. How you so I tell them, bro, you're never gonna make money. This shit has lost me so much money. Like it's people it's it's crazy, you know? And I really thought what why in Mad 18 I was so excited to get to the live event, the first one. I feel like that's the happiest I've I won a belt, I won big games, I won games that for a lot of money. But when I won to get to the Mad 18 live event, I thought, man, this shit gonna blow up. Man, everybody wants support. Man, listen, it's crazy. It just really don't happen. I'm telling y'all, it's just it, it, it. They really think like I'm like I'm the asshole stitching this shit on or something. No, I just order and it shows up. Just like y'all, I do the same thing. Damn. I need dry fit. God damn. I wish I had a life where I wore just. I only could wear dry fit. Never could I wear regular shirts. Golly, man, that shit is crazy to me. Ah, that's just crazy. Don't ask me. Don't listen. The shirts, I'll tell you this right now. The shirts are just support. You know what I'm saying? I mean, obviously, these shirts to me, I pretty much wear this, not this shirt. I pretty much wear, I'll be honest, if any of you guys have met me, I, I pretty much wear this $13 shirt every single day. Some version of this I probably have because what happened was after it happened a week after I went, not only did I put these up for sale right away on the website, but I don't have any action to any access to these shirts. These are all made in a factory far away from me and I don't do anything with them. But I went and made, I want to say 200 copies of this exact black t-shirt and I just brought them down to DC where we did that charity stream. I just had them in my house for the longest. So I probably have about 45 of these extra large t-shirts. I wear these every single day. If I go anywhere, you if I go to a club, you'll see me in this pretty much everywhere other than like a wedding where I have to wear a suit or anything. I'm in this t-shirt. And um you know, that's pretty much it's pretty much just support. It's just I mean, I I wish I could come up, and, and part of it to me is like, I wish I could come up with better ideas and make make y'all want to buy t-shirts, but it's like, I feel, and the one thing about it, man, I feel like, damn, man, that, that's a dope ass idea. And then when the shit don't pop, it's like, it kind of just kill. it kind of like kills my whole, my whole motivation to really keep making shirts. Cause I really thought like the t-shirts with the teams on it would be tough. I really did. I took a lot of time doing this shit. Like making each logo, putting my logo on it, changing the colors. Like it, it was a pain in the ass. And that's, I will tell you, I, I probably sold four of these total. So to me, it was like, after that, it's like, bro, I really, the t shirts are just there, you know? I would 1,000, if I went to Blue Initiated, 1,000 
1,000%, if I went to Blue Martini, I would 100% have this shirt on. Physicality and dry fit, man. Coming for you guys. Yeah, I, I don't really wear anything other than... Since I got my own business and everything, and, and since Jacksonville, I really haven't worn anything other than either a Needed Gaming shirt or the We Are Men shirt. But the physicality shirt is hell. Got some women's stuff on here if y'all want to rock. You know, get your girl a crop top. I thought the Buccaneers shirt was pretty drippy. You know. But this the physicality shirt. 15 bucks. It's just in black. Because that's the only physical, physical shirt that you can rock. It's a black shirt. Yeah, I know Jay Razor. It's really not it's really not that big a deal to me. I just like having it here, really. I'm never the, the, the dub dot penny collection. Like, well, I hate yo. I ha, I understand that when people like hit me with the uh, yo, what the one boy was like, How's the neck quality on your t shirts? No, they really be asking me questions like they're 200 bucks. So I'm like, What? What? Any drawings, man? You want to? I don't know. I'm gonna turn the podcast off. We can go look if there's any drawings coming up soon. But this was Need a Podcast. We are closing in on two hours. Uh, some of these get lengthy sometimes. Pause. Because I know how y'all... The YouTube, the YouTube community is very pause. You're, they're very aware. When I say some gay stuff on YouTube, they definitely just mark it as you said some gay shit. And I, so I like to pause myself all the time. Yeah, D-Bell, I'm going to scroll back up for you. Let me be your goddamn internet explorer, brother. What website do you want to go to next? That's another thing. W, can you go? Can you go check Mudhead for me? I'm not home right now. Like, what is my life that I I just move around the internet for you? What? Like, yes. Let me go to Mudhead. Let me go check. <laughs> let me go check what a team looks like, bro. I just can't deal with some shit, yo. Scroll back up the hoodies. Yes, bro. I'm gonna scroll back up the hoodies. Imagine. What? crazy man but this was needed podcast episode 34 34 straight weeks of madden podcast next week chat what are we talking about we are talking about the first edition of friday night football i wonder if bugs is still in here because the debate is do i kill bugs the entire broadcast or do i take it easy uh but we will be broadcasting friday the first friday night football of the friday night uh communal live communal to live Y'all know what the hell I said. Competition where points matter and stuff. So, that will be Friday. We'll be talking about that. Squads Tournament Sunday, man. If you want to check squads, check my Twitter. I had posted it before. Man, I'm not going to keep telling y'all to sign up. Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm cool if the Squads Tournament has four teams. And we get in and out. And I get to my life. I don't want to be in a 17-hour Squads Tournament. Because, uh, I mean, but I will host it. I'm definitely trying to bring light to the Squads community. So, it's going to pop. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, uh, hey, Eric Murdoch, the quality of t-shirts is it's, it's a t-shirt. Think about the worst quality t-shirt you've ever had. Like, check, I want you guys to just really think about the worst quality t-shirt you ever had. It doesn't, it's not like my sleeves, one sleeve is longer than the other. My sleeves fit right here. I mean, what do you want? It's not Pima Cotton. Like, what do y'all want from a t-shirt? I don't understand. What do y'all want from a t-shirt? What are the options from a t-shirt? From a $13 t-shirt, what do we expect, chat? You own your own clothing brand? Uh, congratulations. I don't own a clothing brand. I own a gaming brand. So clothing is not my specialty. It is a t-shirt. It is a Gildan t-shirt. The one you get from the corner goddamn store. And you put some print on it. You put the little needy gaming logo on it. Boom. I'm a Madden player. I don't... I don't do cotton. I don't do material fabric. No, that's your specialty. God bless your heart. You keep putting out all the crazy ass, the nice t-shirts, you know? That's crazy. Get the polyesters that, you know, anything to keep it cool, you know what I'm saying? Turtlenecks. It's just cra- like, bro, like. Vim would be the same one, bro. He'd be bitch about the t-shirt every time. No, they too small. They too they too skinny. I need I don't need a 1X or a 2X. I need a 1.5X. Do y'all have 1.5X? 
two X is too big, but one X, my titties show. Now, like, what? Film it. Like, bro, it's a t-shirt. Put this shit on and rock. <laughs> I need a 1.5 X. What? I swear to God. Hell, <laughs> Bosa, I need a 1.5 X. I ha no, I definitely have V-necks. I think they're just black. Because cause that's what I wear, kid, when we on our trip. That's what I'm going to wear under the suit jacket. You know what I'm saying? Throw the, throw the needed game in V-neck. Throw the suit jacket over top. Get all the holes. I definitely got the black V-neck. I got one right there, right in the, in the back. I think we can get polos, though, too. I think we can. I think I got to check the website. But anyway, this was Needed Podcast, episode 34, man. Cop some damn shirts, because, man, I'm a struggling-ass man player, man. And I only make $2 a shirt anyway, you know what I'm saying? So you cop a lot. Plus, cop one for your girl. She's going to steal them, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. But anyway, this was Needed Podcast 34. I feel like I said that a lot. Hit the like button.